Okay, so shall we start? Yes, I think we're ready. Okay, so where do we start? So, well, first of all, like, thank you for even everyone turning in. And also, I want to say thank you for all the contributors that have been working uh, like 20 hours a day for the past half a month, 10, 10 each days. And uh, Open Door wouldn't be here today without all of your help from contributors or the community. And uh, I, I mean, I, I got like a lot of requests, and you know, people want to hear more about uh, the person behind the first initial idea. And like why I started it, and uh, you know, what was the roadmap of Open DAO, and and I know all of you have a lot of questions, and uh, I I was waiting for the good opportunity. So like you know, when, once we get over muddy sick down, you know, once things are more clear, then there will be less fraud, and then we can focus on more serious questions. You know, how to build the ecosystem, how we're gonna actually achieve what we want to do. That's why we waited a bit until we did our like this first uh, official MA. Okay, let's start from the first question from hold the airdrop. <laughs> and do we have any plans in making an NFT marketplace to compete with OpenSea? Okay, so um, from Open DAO perspective, we are more like um, a, a DAO that is helping the infrastructure. So. Um, there's no current no current plan to build um, an NFT marketplace ourselves. We do have a lot of like good partnerships. For example, the X to X Y Z. So they they are very integrated with um, SOS and along with other you know upcoming um, platforms. And also we're in touch with other platforms. I'm not gonna name them, but. Uh, you might be surprised like how many NFT platforms that are talking with us, but um, once, once we know more, we will you know release more information, but uh, just don't want to uh, do any over promise. But there is a lot of um, NFT platforms that is gonna integrate SOS in different forms from governance, from, you know, the, the most like easiest way was just to, you know, allow SOS to become their currency. But more we're looking for, you know, like like the letting the platform able to use SOS to vote uh, on their on their governance. For example, like which artists should be curated on the next drop, or or even just um, sharing a percentage of their revenue to you know buy back the SOS and let the SOS holder to decide if they were gonna burn them or distribute back to all the holders. Any other contributors have any saying on this topic? You said it perfectly. Um, also, where are you reading the questions from right now? Yeah, I I, I found it at the um, the open lounge um, on the third. Have AMA questions. There's like uh, you know hundreds of questions in there. Yeah. Okay. I also um, we we curated a, a list off of the questions. Oh yeah. Some no. Because some of them were repetitive, um, okay. so the the link is in our chat. Okay, one well, second. So I want to speak and greet everyone. Um, good um, evening, good morning, wherever you are. I also want to add, actually, that um, yeah, um, we have this list of questions um, that we have already prepared that you also have asked. Um, on the um, AMA channel and later on that I see there are a lot of people like um, raising hands to speak and later we can um, probably go, go ahead with um, people to ask questions. Okay, I, I, I found the curated one. So, so the first question is, um, what do you think the project will achieve by 2024? Um, I think it's very irresponsible to to you know to pull something out uh, 2024. Like MT is pretty new things, and it just you know went boom for the last um, a year or so. Um, it's it's really hard to say what, what will the project achieve by 24. But um, what what we aim to achieve is to you know build better infrastructure for Web3 NFT and the metaverse. 
and also create more competitive and fair environment for all the artists and all the platforms in the space. And um, in in the in the best case scenario by 2024, I would say in every metaverse, you know, protocols, games, platforms, um, SOS will be like the the center currency for them to use. Um, it's, it's similar to like how US dollar is used in every country because like every country is, will, will recognize US dollar more than other currencies. And uh, the advantage for SOS is the, the, there's currently, the reason we have only like 300k people claim SOS token is because for now we are limited to that is pretty much how much, um, how, ma how many people we, we have in the space. Um, it's small, but it's really fast growing. And uh, so, by you know adopting SOS, uh, any project or protocol will pretty much just you know adopt acquire all the users in the space. And um, yeah, and uh, the second question is, what, any ideas how we can add more utility to SOS SOS tokens uh, and what are more come complete SOS ecosystem will look like. So I'll just give a rundown on like what OpenDAO current vision is and what um, what OpenDAO are trying to do, what trying to not to do. So, so OpenDAO is now trying to um, like the OpenDAO official is not gonna you know trying to do any or create any project of our own that is gonna compete with the ecosystem project. Because because we, we, we encourage more and more ecosystem partners to, to you know, adopt SOS, to build on top of SOS. It's, it's pretty much like how you know, Ethereum Foundation, they're not gonna build a lending protocol, right? You, you got a lot of lending protocols like Aave, like, like uh, you know, a lot of Cream, you, know, you got like so many ecosystem partners. But what if Ethereum Foundation, you know, if, if they actually did something themselves, then they would just pretty much kill everyone who want to, you know, start on that path because we, we don't want to have any conflict of interest with anyone who built on top of it. So, uh, yeah, nine. On the... yeah, nine. How, how about I, I ask the, the, the question so that. Yeah, okay. Really okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. So um, this is from nuts for nifties. And the question is how can we as users contribute to the DAO? Other than running a business for 30 years and being in crypto since 2017, I don't really have any other skills. So the question is, how would um, you know people that feel like they fall in that category be able to contribute? Well, I'll, um, I think I think people can contribute from from many things. Like we have a, um, I think we have how many alliances? To like six, seven alliances from writer alliance. Treasure research, and I think it really depends on what the skill set the person have, and uh, and I mean all the contributors in Open Dot very open minded, and we're looking for onboarding at least forty to fifty contributors like for the first couple of months, and that's probably the minimum size of team to actually keeping the Open Dot running forward and execute all the plans we have. And it doesn't really need any experience. I mean, we we can you know both help help each other, and I, I think it, it really depends on how fast you you learn everything. And I mean, this is a really really fast moving space, and it would require learning skill probably the most as long as you're able to learn. And I think anything is fine. Yeah, I was going to add. Right now, we have about thirteen of them, and you know, if if anyone wants to suggest another alliance to be added, um, we're completely open to that. It's a forever growing uh, ecosystem. Yep. All right, so the next question, um, <laughs> this is from Various, and the question is, when Binance? We got a lot of questions about that. It was just touched with some like, exchange listing. I, I do know that uh, a lot of you want uh, SOS to be listed on um, different platforms, and perhaps the the biggest one by market share is Binance. But I mean, like we cannot comment on that, and uh, it is against all the rules for all the exchanges that 
you know, to reveal any listing or even just any intentions. But what I can say is that um, um, I opened up all the contributors. We, we never reach out to any exchanges, and it's not our goal to list any list our tokens to uh, somewhere to you know pump for the price. And, you know, like myself is a builder, so I, I want to build the ecosystem and and by which point the exchange sees us fit to be listed and they will list them themselves. It's not like we have to talk to them. Like every single exchange you sell, including OKEX, OB, FTX, like there are like dozens of exchange, over 20 of them, they list it and they are spending their mar own market marketing budget to, you know, run Twitter AdWords on SOS. They're doing promotions for people, you know, trade on there. It's, it's all from their own pocket. It's, I mean, because OpenDAO never did any raise from VC. We never raised funds. And we, there's no token for all contributors. So there's no way that OpenDAO can pay any exchange or YouTubers or any influencers. So anything you, you sell from from the creation of OpenDAO until now, um, it's all naturally, including like, one of my favorite YouTubers, like the Mr. Guy, the Corn Barrel. So he, he just featured us um, today. And uh, I mean, people, I mean, asking me, like, was that paid? Of course not. This, we cannot pay anyone. And we cannot pay any influencers. We cannot pay any exchanges to list us. Um, the reason a lot of exchange have already listed us because they saw what opened our potential and they saw what, 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 you know, we are creating something really nice. And this is something I have never done before. You know how fair the the job is because um, it's based on your past four or five years contribution to the the ecosystem. Um, and uh, there was no pre mine, there's no pre sale, and even me as a contributor, I I restrict myself from buying on the first thirty hours because I know. I, I don't want to, you know, buy a lot of because I, I I'm a really believer in this. So I I do want to hold some SOS, but uh, the reason I didn't buy it when, when it's really cheap because I don't want people to say, okay, look, this guy nine nine nine, he 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 didn't uh, raise fund, he didn't keep anything for himself, but he bought a, a lot of the SOS when, when it was cheap. I don't want I don't want people to say that. It's 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 basically why people always worry. When the you know Satoshi wallet, right? He when when Bitcoin was created, he mined with his laptop over a million bitcoins, like a million quantity of bitcoins, which 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 has become a lot of people's concern because if if ever he used it, you know this is pretty much like pre mining or keeps a, a portion of Bitcoin to himself, and in this perspective, SOS is actually more fair than even Bitcoin because there was. Not a single person have any advantage or anyone else. So even the contributors, original, you know, founders, whatever name you call it, no one have any single advantage of anyone else. It is the most fair ever in the ten years of crypto history, and that, that is why a lot of exchanges have been, you know, fighting to list list us as fast as possible. And that is why you, you see on the second day we almost hit. 10 billion um, volume in, in trading. So uh, uh, 1 billion, it was like $900 million in trading volume, which is pretty insane for, for new tokens. And uh, of course, we have almost, I think, 299,000 address claimed. And there there's a lot of people are trading on the exchange, which um, we cannot know how, how, how many because it's in a centralized wallet. But I, was, I would assume we probably have around half a million people who actually host SOS now. I think you put that, um, you worded that very well. And I also just wanted to add that um, if the community wants that listing to happen, like Anine said, we don't reach out to the, to the exchanges. However, I know Binance does ask in tweets all the time, what should we list next? So if that is something that you specifically would like to see then you are more than welcome to comment on those tweets uh yeah i mean like we, we don't we don't encourage you to comment on that i i think that was you know just my personal opinion okay i think it's more like a marketing stunt for 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 binance but they're not really gonna look at what people comment on there like if you check the comment it's all really like um 
Dolphins, you know, like both Dogecoin. I'm no offense, but like um as well as do have the potential to become uh, like a, a, a coin that is you know held by millions of people, but the, the goal for SOS is now like really to become a meme coin. This is a, a token. It's gonna you know shape the future metaverse. This is and and also you know I'm probably gonna tell you more. Like SOS is all, the key for SOS of Open DAO is to build better infrastructure, which includes build our own chains. And which is um, we we could start with like uh, you know side chain of Ethereum to provide frictionless, gas-free NFT trading experience for all platforms. Not if OpenSea adopted, that include you know for OpenSea too. So we will create a layer two that can help people trade NFTs for gas-free. You know, like we you don't have to spend a hundred dollar gas. You know, to trade a single NFT that might only cost two hundred dollar to buy. You know, it's just it just not make sense. Hey, hey, I'm GM SOS family and Open Down family. I'm uh, Angus or NGTS or Angs. Yeah, so we have another question from one of our members. Uh, can a telegram be created? Uh, for, for, for Telegram, I would advise no because, um, well, um, I'm, I, I, I use Telegram myself too, and I, I think uh, Discord have a better management um, tools and everything compared to Telegram. And there's a lot of scam activities in Telegram, and uh, the majority of users on Telegram are more a bit of like uh, you know moon boys, you know pump and dump. I, w I would advise, like, we do not open any official te uh, telegrams, but if if any community members want to, you know, create their own telegram group for the SOS community, uh, you're very welcome to do so, but um, there won't be any official telegram group. So for now, uh, we're just going to stick to Discord and Twitter. Um, we do have a YouTube account, though, that we just made, which you guys can subscribe to. All right, so I can go ahead with the next question. Um, the next question is from Riam, and it's, any discussions on cross-chain NFT marketplace with SOS as the main currency? Um, another question that fits into this as well is, are we, work, are we working to work with NFT marketplaces to integrate them in an aggregated site or just interpro, I don't know how to say this word, interoperability? I hope I said that correctly. Yeah, so um, on the cross-chain cross side, so for example, the, the, the partner X stocks are that they are already on three chains. I think they will be on Avalanche soon. So, so yeah, that is, um, I think if anyone paying attention to all the partnerships we have, um, yeah, you can already use SOS on different um, platforms. And I think there was one called Treasureland, and I think they are mostly on Binance chains. So for now, you, you already can um, bridge uh, SOS tokens to like 10 different chains. Uh, there will be an announcement coming soon, coming out soon, which is uh, like a really popular bridge that they, they already listed SOS to be um, one of their like supported um, tokens, and also we are in conversation with um, uh, Polygon DAO, and uh, there will be a lot of synergies between SOS and Polygon, because um, also we are in talk with some uh, games that we, they will want want to you know implement implement SOS, but but because it's like a really high frequency activities, so we, we we're gonna officially bridge to Polygon so that a lot of games can adopt uh, SOS. And and also we are working with some, like for example, Polygon or also other um, reputable companies. Uh, we might do a bit of grant together. So basically people, the devs who want to develop on SOS, and they, they, they can apply for you know, open door grant, but as well as they might get other grant on top of that because um, there are other uh, companies and uh, foundations want to support what uh, OpenDAO is doing. 
Hey, hey, thank you for answering this question. I think that is really very exciting. I, I heard some um, comments um, asking for an airdrop for Polygon um, OpenSea users as well. So I think we will keep an eye on that. Um, and I'm going to ask the next question, okay? So user deep, uh, the user is deep buyer. He's asking us, can we vote on burning all tokens not redeemed? Uh, I I will say technically yes, but I will want to educate everyone. Like burning doesn't get you any anywhere. Like like burning is like the most useless thing ever. It's like you know fooling yourself because um any any like in, in a perfect scenario like in, in because the population is actually growing and uh, this is why like all the governments want to set up two percent inflation goal. Like in in the best scenario. Any ecosystem should have like a slightly tiny inflation. That that's actually the most ideal um, situation. But for for a token that is still adopting its use case and utility, uh, I would I would say no inflation for now, and, and it was not um, pre set up in in the token metrics. But uh, burning just doesn't make any sense. And uh, if anyone wants to say like, can we burn a token in the treasury? I just think of this way, like, do you want to live in a country that the government is so poor, there's no railway, there's no police, there's no street lights, you know, you need, you need the infrastructure, right? You, any tokens that is, okay, not burned, okay, any tokens that is in the treasury, that will, will be locked there. It's in a multi stick by, you know, a lot of reputable exchanges and then personal person. And those SRS tokens will only be used on, you know, Giving our grants, you know, it's basically it will be only used to build better ecosystem to to make what you hold worth more and be able to use it in the more places. Not including marketing, not including you know like partnership, not including everything. So I I would I would suggest that people don't even mention burning anymore and this does not make any sense and if you say okay why ethereum have burning okay i'll, I'll, I'll tell you why because ethereum have inflation all, all the pos proof of stake coins right they, they they have inflation and some of them have a lot of inflation it's not just like three five percent a lot of tokens have like 10 20 percent inflation and for that they introduce a burning mechanism it's, it's really playing with your mind you know and and also, all, all, all there's a lot of shit coins, right? Please don't compare all the shit, shit coins with SOS. And and those tokens have burning because th there's no use case for those tokens. Okay, by burning them, it's it's really like a hype, like announcement to to make people pump and dump with the market maker. That is not something Open Door ever want to do because everyone is here, you know, to build something, to make a history, to 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 be something that you know people will remember. Like say ten years, ten years later, and people will, will remember us. You know what, what we did. So I, I would really, really strong against burning. Yeah, hey, hey, can I jump in to interrupt for a while? Sorry. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like um, I've actually have a better idea. So instead of burning our tokens, I suggest that we use these tokens to create future revenue for our DAO. So there is a certain mechanism for our DAO to buy back certain um revenue generating tokens, or um, or more uh, more technically we call it the LP tokens of our DAO. So I will cover that more in depth later on. So I hope uh, you guys can um, vote on that favorably when when the snapshot comes out. And then we can go on to the next question. So there have been many, many questions about this, uh, about where, when, and how will we do the compensation for the scam victims process? How does that work? Okay, so um, the, the, that, that was one of the reasons to behind the whole open door because I saw all of like, uh, for example, artists, that they work really hard, you know, making art in an empty space. And they might like say made ten is, but they, they weren't really familiar with um, you know MetaMask, and there are people you know imprisoning like uh, open open sea stuff, you know, reach out like fake open sea stuff, reach out to these artists, and they then they got scammed, they lost all their money, and so the the compensation scheme is really for people who indeed need help, they, they need it, otherwise they couldn't pay the rent next month. So as open and 
you know, they can propose it. There will be a small group of um, contributors be working on, on sorting out these cases. So it will be reviewed case by case. And uh, a conversation will be a mixture of in the, in the form of SOS. And it depends on what community decides and also depends on the person's situation and why he needs this conversation. And uh, also um, a lot of part of that conversation will come from by helping the artist or helping the, um, the buyer. But any, anyone who say like they, they, they made a bad investment, like, you know, like um, they, they, they purchased something and you got rocked, that's just a failed investment. That pretty much like you roll a dice and on, on a casino table and you lose it, that is not qualified as, you know, like, um, you, you, sh you shouldn't propose that if you just, because, you, you know, you invest in some NFTs and that NFT got delisted by OpenSea or they, they got uh, dropped. Also, if you like, a, you're a millionaire or billionaire, you lost, um, you know, you lost a half a million NFT, I, I don't think you should also, you know, reach out to open door because there are other people who need help more than you. Yeah, um, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I'm just want, I just want to jump on this topic, um, nine, um, because um, in my experience, actually, that, that's why it's also a little bit so um, difficult to to prove who are the people that are um, re, um, authentic, um, that, that really got um, scammed. So I just want to call it um, call um, all of us here listening. We need to participate in the conversation. Actually, how we are going to check this because then that's why the Compensation Alliance, we need a little bit more um, people to be involved so we can really refine the, um, <clears throat> the process of how we're going to verify these cases. That's just my um, two cents on this and like also call to action for um, all of us here. And uh, Angus, do we have um, another question actually listed for? Um, um, yes, yes. Thank you for answering. Yes, this compensation alliance will be working very hard, I can see. Um, so NFT Homie is asking, okay, are we expecting people to work for free in the alliance teams or will there be tokens allocated from the treasury for play to earn task bots? It's a really good question. Uh, yeah, I think there will be a structure to set up for all the contributors from modes and also the people who participate, you know, committing their time and um, in this. But um, I think it's an ongoing conversation between all contributors and we all have something drafted and, um, you know, sent to public in, within a week time. Yep, wonderful. Yes, we are working on that. Right now, there will definitely be a competition plan. So the next question, um, the user B, any plan on releasing an open DAO profile picture collection? Wow. Uh, on that topic, um, I, I think there are other artists that are creating a free airdrop to every SOS holders. But whether our official PFP um, for now, no, but uh, there are ideas, you know, circling around for, um, it's like the way how we can, you know, we've been thinking of how we're going to help all the projects that we want to, you know, adopt uh, SRS holders because we have so much holders and a lot of projects that they don't, they don't have that big, that large collection. So in the future, it's just an idea. Okay. It's no problem. It's, it, it might not even happen. Now, if you stake SRS for a certain period of time, you might get a different tier of membership. And with some membership NFTs that you might have early access to some, uh, you know, NFT jobs. Now you you might grant you some perks, but this is still an ongoing conversation. And there's uh, some great artists, you know, helping behind the scene. But you know, nothing for for certain right now. Okay, got it. So the next question, um, Lando Man and Dot Sama ask. Can OpenDAO work with Flow and Moon River? Oh yes, of course. I, I think um, Flow and Moon River. I think especially Moon River are very good, um, and they're EVM compatible. So there's no problem at all. 
Yeah, I just wanted to add a little bit about, um, you know, there's been a lot of questions about can Open Door work with uh, XYZ or can, can Open Door work with this or this project. So uh, we are like a DAO. So if it's going to be like a huge official partnership, we, we do need to like put up a proposal and there should be some consensus process around it. Yeah, we, we do want people to ask us, say, Hi, hey, how, why are we working on working with project A and not working with project B and, and that kind of questions. Yeah, we, we don't want that. Okay, so we move on to the next question. Oh, sorry, now you want to say something? Oh, yeah, sure. I, I think um, that there will be more, you know, like a workflow process for, you know, all the partnerships. But as long as there's like 100% uh, no damage to the to the DAO, it's just pure benefit. Yeah, the, it will be implemented. And uh, I mean, open DAO, uh, uh, you know, you can tell from the name, like, we, we all, everyone is already open minded and we want to embrace everyone. So there was, there's no enemy. Like, there's, and like, open DAO is not trying to com compete or, you know, like, take over or something. It's, it's really about working together and helping the space become more fair, you know, more competitive. By doing that, you know, everyone have a better platforms you know i'm not pointing on names but you know by that will actually increase the the space you know by giving the matter platforms protocols or artists a more fair and more competitive space that will because the more competitive the space is the, the faster the space actually evolve yeah i wanted to add on that right so like in the in, in the bankers podcast we used to call this um uh, credibly neutral so I'm gonna say that again. So we are like we want to be credibly neutral, yeah. So we we sort of like uh, want to encourage ecosystem projects. It, you know, we don't want to um, favor any particular chain, protocol, project, or marketplace. So um, I'm gonna move on to the next question. The anonymity of the team does not create, in my view, confidence in the project in fact, fosters suspicion and uncertainty. Can you explain why you choose to remain anonymous? I think it's very important um, to not have uh, someone to become a sole leader or the person that so affiliated with a, a DAO. A, a true protocol, a, a true token, it needs to be done like this. Um, the, the reason Bitcoin still have a higher market cap than Ethereum that even even Ethereum have all the use case, all the dApps, all the users, and everything. It, it is because Ethereum have a very clear founders, right? You know, you know if Vitalik says something stupid today, you will see a, a, a decline in price in Ethereum by I don't, know, I don't know how many percent. Whereas Bitcoin is is more decentralized, where, where there's no founders, you, you don't you don't need to worry that something happened to him. It's, it's, it's a bit like Tesla, right? If Elon Musk, you know, resigned from Tesla, what do you think of the stock? You know, people are buying buying Tesla because of Elon, Elon Musk. They're not buying Tesla because of Tesla. It's about the same same thing. So I, I would say the the ultimate goal for Open DAO is that there's no centralized person that that is so like you know correlated with with this project. And that, that is why I would say a lot of people will choose to stay annoying. Anonymous. That's a great answer. Um, the next question that we've been getting asked a lot is when will the staking be live? And also, who are we getting it audited by the contract? Okay, so, the, I mean, the contract is actually. Uh, finished um auditing but uh, uh there are some like minor things that is not really important and they are getting fixed right now uh it's audited by certic which is one of the most um trusted popular um audit firms and it's all, also audited by um some uh, other famous sports club. I don't know, like it will also sushi teams helping to audit it and there's uh, among some other you know reputable Ethereum devs on on top of it. I just want the, like the devs just really want to make sure there's nothing wrong with the staking um, contract. And also one of the reason that we we launch like uh, every incentive before the staking because we really do want to encourage 
and to build up the TVLs for the, for the SOS, where you know people can buy and sell the tokens easier. Um, and also decentralized exchange is more like in favor of, in, in my opinion, because it's, um, it's uh, actually, you will be able to participate in voting, you'll be participate in airdrops from other projects. Uh, instead of putting your tokens in centralized exchange, you might not get um, all the benefits that you, you could, and you might not even to actually experience what DAO is. You know, I, I mean, a lot of people probably build SOS and they probably don't know what Open DAO do, and they don't know what Open DAO vision is, and they don't know what DAO actually is. And by having SOS in your in your wallet, and you actually control your own keys, and I think it's a very good way to experience everything. And um, yeah. Yeah, I think thank you for answering these questions. These are like incredible. Yeah. So um, the next question we have from Lamboland Larry. How did OpenSea see all the wallets that have made an Ethereum transaction on OpenSea? Okay, okay. Actually, maybe I can answer this one. Um, so actually, who actually owns your NFTs? So what happens after you buy an NFT? Actually, it goes on the blockchain. So right now, OpenSea is working mostly with like the Ethereum blockchain. So that is actually public information. So all your NFTs are public information. Um, and of course, there's a next question of where is your art for your NFT project? So 99% of NFT projects art actually do not exist on the blockchain. So that is a topic for another discussion. Yeah, does that answer the question, I guess? <laughs> then we can move on to the next one, maybe. Um, is there a user? Is there a limit to how many alliances a user can be part of? One of our users is saying that they cannot join the Renaissance Alliance. The re reaction emoji isn't adding the role. Um, okay, I I'm going to answer the second part. Then the first part, we will let Night X answer. Um, we will fix the emoji. We will fix the emoji. Yes, there's a bug probably. I'm on it right yeah. now. Okay, I'm, I'm not the best person to answer this. Like, I, I probably like focus my time on you know building the ecosystem and uh, on, on internal management. Uh, probably Rachel is the best person to answer that. Yeah, maybe I can chime in a little bit. I I personally feel that we should focus. So, like people in the metaverse have a focus issues, including myself. So, I think for your best benefit, you should try one or maximum two alliances a week or something. You know, if you feel that this alliance does not vibe with you, then you can change to another one. But uh, once you choose one, I think you should just stick to one. I think that's the best for you. One or maximum two. And we have another question. Can we move voting on chain? Pros and cons. Oh, sorry, can I repeat? Uh, can we move moved voting on chain pros and cons okay so because in, initially the the smart contract was wrote to you know minimize the the gas cost for everyone to claim it so there was no um, so for now the smart contract for sos tokens does not support uh, voting on chain so that, that is why we're using the um, the genesis genesis magic and plus snapshot voting I know it's not perfect, but uh, I think by in a couple of months, I'm not sure how long it's going to take. Um, when SOS Midnight come out, um, if, you know everyone will might need to do like a token swap, where they, they they can swap their token to to the Midnight, so they can also they can bridge any NFT. For example, like CryptoPunk or you know Bored Ape, they can bridge it to SOS Chain. And where they can enjoy more like a frictionless, no gas, and you know faster blocks confirmation, and um, yeah, so so that 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 will be solved once we move it. So for, then the solution now will be wrapping the token, which is a bit too much for you know people to to do. I think especially we are the size of you know like over three hundred k users. Okay, got it. So um, I see that most of the big questions have been asked. So I personally want to ask a question because um, I feel it's very, very important that as a DAO, we, we set together what a common vision is and a common mission is. And this has to be as clear as possible. So, you know, um, we have come up with one uh, vision and we would like to ask uh, Night X for his opinion. So um, we've heard a lot 
um, from from NIAX. So it takes us a while to digest. So he spoke about something like, you know, we want to be the Disney or Metaverse. So I'm going to let my ex, you know, elaborate more on that. Um, but uh, as a team, I think we have, uh, I think that some of the contributors, we have proposed this vision statement, okay? Let's, let's listen to this. So we want to accelerate digital natives into the singularity. Let me say that again. Accelerate digital natives into the singularity. Okay, I'm going to hand the mic back to my ex. What do you think? I think that's a perfect sentence, you know, perfect description for what we are doing. You know, it might be a bit bold, but that just perfectly describes what we're doing right now. I'm going to copy and paste it and put it in um, the general chat and our um, our event chat, just so people can read it with their eyes. So, Nyx, can you elaborate more about this being the metaverse, uh, the Disney of the metaverse? <laughs> Yeah, okay. So one one of the the vision, the, the, the goal for OpenDAO is to kind of bridge between metaverse and the world we are living right now. You know, we have a lot of fantastic IPs. For example, just I'm just doing some like Marvels, Disney's, you know, like they have a lot of IPs, but you know, we we're not we're not enjoying them in in the metaverse and potentially OpenDAO could acquire some brands, IPs, and you know, bring them into the metaverse. And also, potentially, OpenDAO could acquire some blue chip projects, you know, like helping them to tap into the real world by, for example, opening some, you know, NFT themed park or hotels around the world to to you know, actually bring more utilities. Like you know, everyone want to showcase. You know, everyone want to flex. People want to flex on um, you know their avatars on Twitter. That's why they they buy a crypto bank or or what they want to feel they are part of the a wolf pack. And um, by putting their their NFT brands into a, a park where like you get like hundreds of thousands, not even millions of people, you know, seeing them every day, that will increase the exposure for any NFT by far. And that will also put open door in the in a position that, like um, like in the position of Disney, like all, all of the brands they want to join the family, they want to join the the the, the club. Yeah, thank you for answering that for us. So we are going to open the last. Oh, sorry, is is nice still talking? Okay, so we're going to ask, let, leave the last 10 minutes, okay, for precious time um, for community AMA. So for everybody who has an interesting question you want to ask, you can raise your hands. We'll try to bring you on stage. But right now I see that we have a community member. He's called Suchi.Eft. So I've been to his Twitter spaces. So this young man, he has read a thousand books very early in his life. So he's very, very knowledgeable. And um, I'm going to like invite him if he has any uh, comments or questions to make. Uh, are you there, Suchi? Yes, I am here. And it's my pleasure to be on this uh, space right now with you all guys. And, uh, you know, I just love the answers. I uh, I love what uh, what did 9X said about um, why he's anonymous. And that is all the reasons that the DAOs are over here because power cropped and absolute power co uh, cropped absolutely. And those are here to fix and address this issue into the human com communities and uh, human social behaviors <laughs> to take the power out of the hand of few and give it to all of the members that are participating in that community. Alliances is our power and it is what we are looking forward to build on and build this with and you guys are power the guys that are listening now are with us our, our hope to take this to another stage this open door has been this this coin has been airdropped for free and this is 
your thing it is your time and this is basically our time to do whatever we want with it everything is going to be put into the vote as you seen what happened with the multi stakeholders it's going to be every six months reviews and as what um, i was reading a tweet uh, that vitalik was um, you know publishing about the uh, bitcoin cash yesterday and uh, he he really uh, mentioned over there that we need much more governance tokens and this is what we are doing over here at its best and we just gonna carry on what we are doing and we need you guys please join the alliances and please put your hands into uh, in, into our hands and into hands of each other and let's make the greatest thing that has ever been created and make this DAO the most artistic financially with collaboration with the all the greatest developers that are in the space and together we can just really move mountains. I, I cannot see anything is impossible the only thing that i see in impossible is i am possible i know some of the people might think this is a cliche or whatever and but i promise you this is what i really feel and i really believe in humanity and i believe in the future and i'm so bullish on sos and on the future of what is gonna come and i believe human beings are tool makers we are so finders and we will find the way to make everything better and make everything greater because we have you guys if you're listening my voice it is the reason you are here and i'm just it, you know forwarding my hands towards you and i please ask you to join the alliances and together we can do everything we desire this is our vote and we're gonna make it better and this is our time let's fucking go thank you very much i'm seeing your chats in the general i love you guys i love you and this love is unconditional i don't want anything from back from it as 9x don't want as much he don't even wants a fame of it this is amazing this is truly what we were waiting for decades to come and now finally is here let's make the best of it i love you guys and i love to be here let's fucking go <laughs> whoa i can i love the high energy you guys i love that thank you sushi what a great um <laughs> a very uh, yeah everyone is affected with your uh, motivation and passion Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you. So, um, I see a couple of, sorry. I just said thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be among you guys. And it's a pleasure to be on this stage. It's a privilege of my time. Uh, what can be better to start the 2022? Let's fucking go. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so I, I know there have been a lot of community members who have been contributing a lot. I, I think there's these Youngs, uh, Mr. Youngs and Mrs. Youngs. Um, there's also a couple of people who join. Oh, hey, we have uh, e-money to zips. I'm going to invite you guys to speak. So if you guys have something to answer or something to ask, I, I want you guys to like press um, request to speak. So it's a little icon at the bottom. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to like talk about poeps. Okay, so of course there's going to be a poeps. So I've, uh, I've 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 told one of my uh, favorite artists to work like over time over the holidays over the weekend, so I had to pay her like double for it. But the work that's come out is incredible. Okay, so our contributors are going to circulate this uh, Google form. Okay, I want you guys to go click into it and go have a look at the art. So I'm just gonna explain. Can I can I can I just say I I uh, linked it in the community updates, and it's beautiful. Yep. So poeps are these little little NFTs. So they are actually really NFTs. They live on the XDAI chain. So they are hundred percent free to mint. And uh, once you have it, where do you see it, right? So you download this poep app, and you can see it in your wallet, in your uh, phone. Um, so they might have special utilities. I don't know, but uh, right now they just look very very nice, and they have a special meaning in my heart. So this particular poep, you can see what you can see is you can see this little um. It's very, very colorful and very, very vibrant and it's meant to be very, very inclusive. Like, uh, I love how this uh, poet represents our Tao, like how colorful it is. So, um, what you can see is you see this little ice cream and you can see different, different scoops to the ice cream. So, each of you guys bring one little scoop to this open Tao family and we really want to see how 
how how nice this ice cream is going to be, how colorful, how tasty it's going to be at the end of the day. And of course, this is called tall order, right? Because we are doing something very, very incredible. And it is really a tall order for all of us, you know, to step up and to do the right thing. So I'm going to distribute the password right now. Okay, the password is history, all caps, history, H-I-S-T-O-R-Y. I'm going to repeat that again. The password is history, H-I-S-T-O-R-Y. Okay, then uh, next up, do we have any community members who want to talk? Yeah, so I actually had a question that I wanted to ask Nine um, in relation to kind of the, the building of the ecosystem and the interaction with uh, kind of how that how that interacts with with the treasury as a whole. So, you know, with a lot of the partnerships that we've seen come out already, we're getting and, and apologies if my throat's a little scratchy here, but uh, a lot of the partnerships we've seen have had like revenue shares coming into SOS and on the Treasury Alliance, one of our uh, tasks was to figure out how to create passive income streams for the DAO. So, you know, given that currently the entire treasury is made up of SOS, that's quite concentrated, right? And I just wanted to kind of see what your opinion was, given that it seems like the long-term vision is to create almost a, you know, interoperable reserve currency of sorts that's just kind of used by all, you know, governed by all. Um, it, do you see a, a reason to even uh, necessarily diversify out the treasury, given that we are going to be kind of a... Um, an all-inclusive currency for the the space. Yeah, um, yeah. It's a really great question. Um, since we had the contributor calls like yesterday, and we've been talking about, um, uh, we're probably like for now not going to do any OTC deals to you know swap any treasury SOS to any other forms. But um, for all the unclaimed SOS, if if the vote happens to be like you know ended earlier, uh, for now, you know people have been favoring the one week ones. Uh, in that case, you might use like you know by vote, and there will be a vote and a vote coming up. So all the unclaimed SOS will be you know purchasing all the LP tokens and people provide, so people can. It's a bit similar. Um, to the Olympias Pro, so you know people can buy SOS with a discount by you know giving giving their liquidity to us. So Open DAO will own is own liquidity instead of people just farm when the liquidity high and sell them when the APY is down. But that, that's just one of the options. But yes, we we are looking into that. So that's that's great to hear. Um, I, I think that this was something that we were talking about a little bit, uh, Angie and myself, about kind of helping educate people on, you know, the the kind of bonding type mechanism that you're referring to. So looking forward to hearing more about that. Thanks for the answer. Yeah. So on top of that, um, yeah. So that uh, by buying back the this LP tokens, we're actually diversifying our treasury into a little bit of Ethereum as well as earning uh, long-term income. So any other community members want to... Oh, I see. We, I we can have see one, actually. Yes. I have a similar question, kind of on the, con on, the, on the topic of passive income for holders. So I don't know how many people are, are aware of this, but the, uh, the X NFT marketplace has just launched, and I saw on Twitter that they were discussing a partnership with OpenDAO and giving 25% of their tokens to SOS holders over the next four years or something. I just wanted to hear more details about that partnership and kind of the, the more grandiose plans within that. It's a really exciting project, and the token just launched today. So it's really early, and, and I'm just excited to see kind of what the plan is with you. Yeah, okay, so, so it's a confirmed partnership, and... Uh... So they are distributing 25% of all of their tokens to SOS holders, but um, it's only for the people who stake SOS. And they will be distributed um, weekly. So every week, you will get an airdrop from from the X team. And uh, 
the reason that they chose to you know distribute to the SRS holders that who stake them because you know ultimately the the partnership the synergy is because you know as open door community we kind of have every single person who is a uh, active wallet in in the space and uh, all, of, all of that the as a platform x they want the most you know loyal person that with a vision of long term holding and supporting the 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 cause so so all the people who will be staking the SOS will get four years of rewards um, which means the first year there will be official rewards from the 20% staking which is people voted even i i don't necessarily agree like one year seems a bit too too short but after one year you are you are still you can still stake SOS but there will be no official SOS reward but instead there will be um more and more, you know, ecosystem partners who are looking to target, you know, acquire the users from open DAO community. So after one year end, you, you will no longer get any extra SOS, but you will get tokens like X and many other more. Right. And then in able to compound those rewards, you'd be able to stake the X token for for a percentage of fees on that platform as well. So I just thought that was an interesting point to bring up to SOS holders because there's quite a bit of synergy there. Yeah, yeah, they are they are a decentralized uh, NFT marketplace. So I think they are giving like a hundred percent of their fees to to the people who stake their X. Yep. Cool. Yeah, well, thanks for touching on that. I appreciate that. Hey, everybody. Um, Yonx is actually recording this for posterity, so he didn't want to come on stage and potentially break the recording. But um, we are so excited to be part of this community. So a couple of things. We just want to just invite everybody, if you're not already in an alliance, join one. I think that's where the relationships and the magic of this DAO is going to happen are in those alliances. Not just clicking the buttons, but really just dive in, share your ideas, connect. We would love to get to know you guys. And um, second, uh, we just started promoting content from open DAO on YouTube. So if you would like, if you're interested in YouTube, go to the open DAO channel on YouTube. There's lots of content. Yonks is going to be making a video called how to join an alliance for those of you that are kind of newer to the DAO world. We just want to make this thing super easy um, about everything, how to cast snapshot votes, how, just everything for everybody who's new. And then we, there's su such high quality leadership in this organization that we've met so far that we just, you've got an opportunity to meet some of the top smartest, most influential people in crypto. And I, I mean, we've been in this thing for a week. I've learned a ton. I've met guys that I really want to be friends with for, for years after this. So that's what I got. Um, just really looking forward to working with all of you. Hey, thank you so much. Um, sorry, I got to cut you off. So I think we have at most at another 10 minutes. So I want to make sure that everybody who's come on to stage has a, has a chance to speak and ask your question. So um, try to keep your questions short, maybe just one question. Um, I want to look at this uh, Tamri one five three. We haven't heard your voice. No. Sorry. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm going to come back to you later. How about? Um, no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. No, my question was about uh, regarding um, the relationship between um, Open DAO and X, and it has been partially um, answered. So. It was uh, what's what was the link between X and Open DAO, but he just answered. So, thank you. Ah, okay, no problem. Wonderful. How about Sammy or One World? Hi there. How you doing? Hi, we're good. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, um, for having me up here. I just wanted to uh, shout you guys out because I'm I'm very still new to this, still learning. Um, what you guys are doing for the community and for the space is is big. You know, it's beyond big. And um, just from somebody who's still learning in the space, um, I appreciate the knowledge. I appreciate you guys, um, you know, having these types of, of organizations and having these types of spaces for, you know, people of all kind. You know, I just want to say I appreciate it. Um, my, my question as somebody who's a little bit more new to this was... Um, with the alliances, um, I, I was curious because I have a, I have a marketing background, but I, I wanted to ask more about um, making a contribution because I always appreciate these types of communities 
Um, in what way could I contribute as as a holder and as somebody who has a skill set that I think um, could help? You know you, what you guys are doing. You already did like by coming up to the stage to share your voice. That is already like huge contribution. So if you are of a marketing background, yeah, it'd be nice for you to join our marketing alliance. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. I'll be in there, and I just want to say thank you guys again. You guys keep doing what you're doing. Um, yeah, people are behind you. I'm behind you, and yeah, I'm excited to connect with more of you guys soon. Appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We appreciate you too. I just want to say one thing about the POAP form. Um, all you do is you fill out the answers to the questions. You put history in caps as the claim code, and you submit. That's all you do. Um, uh, yes. So we're just collecting. I, oh, sorry. Do you mind if I say something real quick? Yeah, yeah. Go so, ahead. I uh, I don't have a question. I actually wanted to reach out to the community. Um, this is an absolutely amazing opportunity for all of us to build something excellent as a team and to have a collective voice that speaks louder than any of us individually. Um, I implore you. Please go get involved with the alliances. I was on five of the meetings yesterday. Um, it was great to see people starting to get in there, but we need to get more hands on this because there are so many talents. And like just from what I've seen in Gen Chat over the last um, few weeks uh, or a few, or few days, geez, holy cow, I can't believe it's only been a few days since this launched. Um, please come on and get involved. Uh, participate in the discussions. I, I don't have a lot of experience with some of the stuff that I'm doing, but I want to contribute however I can. And the best way to do that is to be there when people are talking about ways to contribute. Um, please come out and help us make something incredible. Bring your talents to the table. If you don't think you have talents, uh, come holla at me. I will be happy to help you find them. Everyone has something. Um, yeah. I love you guys and this project. Uh, that's all I got to say. Yeah, I keep hearing people saying that they feel that they are new into this and they don't know how to contribute. Maybe later I'll touch on that. But uh, before that, I think we want to hear the, our uh, uh, block bounce and our and your friendly potatoes voice. So maybe block bounce, block bounce, uh, BLM. Hi. You, you need to press the push to talk button. Okay. You are bouncing in and out. You need to press and hold the press to talk button. Okay. Ah, yes. Good, good. Now you're gone again. Uh, you try to press and hold on to the press to talk button. Hi, yes. Could you, could you, hear, could you, you guys hear me? Loud and clear, loud and clear. Hi, th thank you for having me on. Um, first, I want to thank you, you guys, and all the work you guys have done to create this DAO and uh, bringing the, the OpenSea community together. So that's a lot of work, and I, I really appreciate it. I believe in the mission that you guys are trying to create a better uh, NFT community for everyone, um, and, and I, I'm glad to be a part of it. I hope to be able to join a, an alliance soon. Um, I was kind of hesitant at first, thinking that you know there's so many people with so many skills that you know you guys won't might not need me to contribute in that aspect but um after today's call it definitely um encouraged me to to reach out and uh contribute in any way i can um i i do have just one question i was listening and uh you mentioned the po app um uh, mint code it was history and and I put that in, but it doesn't seem to be working for me at least. Um, so no, it's not a it's not a main code. It's a form. So you submit your form later. Uh, later we will distribute using this thing called poap dot delivery. Later we will net, let you know. Oh, okay, okay. Please excuse yeah. me. I, I thought it was like a you just put it in the app. Yeah, there All was right. a little bit of, of a mix up. Um, the the links will be sent after. Right now, it's just the form. I think. Okay. Um, we have the last two community members here, uh, PF Diva. You wanna unmute? Hi yeah. there. 
Sorry, uh, sorry, I have a question before um, because uh, members are asking that there is an email on the phone and is this email when they want to claim their Pope, is it going to be save on the sheet? I answered that because it is a Google form, it is just a necessity, um, you know, based on the Google's uh, obligations that they put it over there. But I don't think it's going to be saved or anything. Uh, can can we cl uh, clarify that as well, please, before we move on to the next um. Ah uh, yes, that's correct. Yeah, I don't. I actually don't need your email. Yeah, but I need your wallet address, the the public address. Um. So, P F Diva. Yes. Hey. Yeah. Uh, my question is how you guys envision uh, the channels of communication between the alliances and the core team working. Um, is it just going to be through the vote, or is there some way that people from the alliances have like? are privy to the conversations the core team are having and like where those those lines of communication are yeah so like usually when things start out they usually start rather centralized but over the time we will make sure that things become more and more centralized and open so like right now when something is starting you know it's um, very fragile so we want to make sure that we get the best and most trusted contributors in so we are writing out the guidelines right now on how to become like a contributor, how to get nominated. So I, I think we want to take feedback from the community as well. Um, and ultimately, I think what's going to happen is we are going to have like regular alliance calls, regular community calls to sync up all these different ideas. Uh, anybody else wants to jump in, chime in? Um, hi guys, um, I just want to say, uh, I'm just going to step down uh, from this stage so that if, if anyone wants to come up and th they can still ask um, nine or anyone here in the stage. So it was wonderful um, listening to you all. I'm just going to be um, on the, uh, with the audience now. Oh, oh yes, that reminds us. So uh, if you finish speaking and you don't have any other questions, maybe you can step down, like whoever um, is on the stage right now, you can step down so I can bring up more people onto the stage. Yeah, so yeah, I think I... am also going to step down so other people can come up. So thank you, everyone, for your questions. Thank you. We love you both. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, uh, just because they are still asking this question, they are saying uh, if they uh, already put the email in, is it going to be basically um, saved in the, basically, is the email address is going to be uh, stored or not? And, um, uh, after after I distribute the poems, I'll destroy all this uh, data. The email okay. address is mainly to, um, I think in some way that Google form prevents like people from trying to farm the form. Yes. Yeah? Okay. So um, we want. I want to hear from your friendly potato. Are you there? <laughs> That's a really cute name, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Uh, so first, thank you for letting me talk. And I, I'm a new investor, and I have uh, things to ask. And uh, so every coin we invest, they tell our coin is the currency. And I wanted to know what makes us so unique in our utility, which is going to create evolution in the NFT space. That was my question. Uh, so you're asking for what makes SOS unique? Yeah. Okay, it's, it's very simple. So can I, can I answer that? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead if you want to answer. I, I feel like hearing from both of you would be amazing. I can't wait to hear both of your answers. Yes, of course. Yeah, I'm going to wait after uh, 9x because, to be honest, I am more excited to hear what he's going to say about this, and then I'm going to... Okay, so um, to explain why SOS is unique, and I just give a background of why like SOS you know, gain so much adoption over the first three days. We have like over 200k wallets. It's because, you know, NFT space is really nice, but it's also very isolated. You know, like every collection have its own small community. Like Punk have like 3,000 people in the community, but maybe just 500 active ones. Like, you know, Bored have bigger ones, you know. Every single communities they are talking about um, like flipping each other. Okay, is is it is um 
ape gonna flip pump? Is a cool cat gonna flip, you know, whatever? So, and so not only the NFT, you know, proof of work community are very, you know, isolated and sometimes hostile to each other. And, but also like for different NFT clubs, right? You got Gary V's, you know, V friends. You, you got like, I also, I'm a, a contributor in uh, Club 721. You have the uh, MVHQ. You have all, all sort of clubs with, um, you know, gated membership. So the, the, what really brings everyone together is open sea. So everyone is isolated somewhere along with their pack. And the only thing that can unite them is OpenSea because they all use OpenSea to buy, trade, collect, invest NFTs. But somehow, um, but I still, I still love what OpenSea does. I think it's so important that uh, OpenSea exists. And um, but somehow, the community dislike it, and that that is why there there is no not a single place where everyone can unite and, and be together. And OpenDAO just happened, you know, touch on that point, and that, that is how like. You know, open door grows so fast, and I, I think by doing that, open door actually represent the whole space and actually included pretty much ninety percent of everyone in the space. And for any any projects and any protocols that they want to, you know, acquire users like in in a, in, a, in a snapshot, um, in, in, in like as fast as possible. That's that's the whole reason they want to launch the token, right? By launching the tokens, you can actually let users to grow with your products to become more loyal, and uh, and for them to you know adopt or implement SOS is their fastest way. There's no other tokens can can make that happens. I'm just to give you an example, like um, um, most most of the tokens, um, the the project themselves, they will artificially pump the token holders on chain. Because they want to look nice, they want to get listed on exchange, and for exchange, they always check how how many users you actually have. Um, and so actually, because I've been investing in the space for a very long time, and uh, on average, uh, a, a successful project that is listed on tier one exchange, more or less, they have two or three thousand holders. That's it. But on the blockchain, um, you might see twenty thousand, but no, they they actually only have ten percent. What they actually shows to have and but we have like 300k in in a few days that that is something never happened before ever like mm -hmm. you see like some some tokens now like, i'm not i'm not trying to compete compare with meme token because i just feel so so gross to do it but even the meme token which is like you know people buying a hundred dollar each or something like that and uh, uh shiba have just a little bit over one million holders and uh, they had been doing it for years. They, they got listed and shared everywhere. And we accomplished thirty percent of that in just a week. And and plus, we have utility. We are doing something extraordinary, and not just you know being a main coin. So I, I think that will put us in some unique unique position. And for everyone who ever want to use this, they will never have to worry that there's a founder gonna impact it. There's um, an organization or VC bought it. At a discounted price, so they can dump on retails. So, in, in many perspective, we are so unique since the you know blockchain history. We are unique in many positions. Thank you. That answered. Okay, um, everybody. Thank you for all these questions and answers. I, I must be mindful of everybody's time. So we're like twenty past the official time hour. So you should. Um, at this point, we transition to like the non-official part of the recording or of the meeting uh, of the community call. So it's going to be more like a vibe check. So if anybody needs to go, I, I guess you guys can go. Otherwise, um, I will continue to moderate the stage and whoever has a, you know, wants to speak or something, I'll pull them up. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I think this is like so interesting, like open down strong. <laughs> Perfect. 